Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's education. So I'm Diana Eagle, and I'm here to share with you more about essential oils and animals. Uh, this is a, a very dear topic to me because I use essential oils and other things naturally as much as possible on all of my animals. And I've been doing this for a while now and I thoroughly enjoy it. And I wanna be able to help you know what you can and cannot do with dogs, cats, horses. I use a lot on the horses more than I do the, of anything else, but that doesn't mean I haven't used them on all of them. <laughs> so welcome. And for those of you that are going to watch this on the replay, uh, those of you that are live with me, it's please, if there's a specific topic that you would like to talk about, let me know so that we can look at that and address it and help you find more answers and solutions for what it is that you're looking for. Because there's a lot of things out there that we can use. I hope that you'll educate yourself uh, a lot more on the use of your essential oils around your animals. It's very, very important to know that the source of your essential oils is something that is trusted. I trust doTERRA specifically because they do the research. There's a, and they do not adulterate anything that we have. Whereas you have to take extreme caution when you buy from other resources, specifically places like, um, you know, over the counter in um, your local Walmart or Rite Aid, any of those places really know the source and know that there are not any harmful dilutions or other products inside that. So let's dive a little bit real quickly into what makes a true essential oil, because I want you to understand again, just because an essential oil says 100% on the bottle does not mean that that entire bottle is 100% a pure essential oil, okay? Most places will do a chemical extraction of essential oils, and that chemical extraction can have a residue which can be harmful, especially to our pets. And then other things that we use in our home can also be harmful to our pets, like the things we use on the carpet, the things we use to make our home smell good. Is it a plug-in? Um, what are we doing? Is it a candle even? Um, those kinds of things can be um, highly toxic to our animal friends as well as us. Don't overdo it, okay? So let's talk about some do's and don'ts. Now, most of us want to know what you don't do and what are the things you can do with our dogs and our cats. So my name is Diana Hinkle, and I have been doing this for 10 years now, over 10 years. And I realized how much I was using essential oils and other natural products on my pets. I have horses, I have dogs, I have cats, I have chickens, probably an overabundance of chickens. <laughs> um, I had to tell my husband to quit bringing me chickens home. Um, and then I have chickens that kind of go off into the woods because they're free range during the day. <laughs> so they bring me back babies and it's like, stop doing that. <laughs> I know that won't stop unless I pen them up. Um, now, um, I also have had, I have goats currently. I have had pigs. Um, there's a number of different things we've had. But let's talk about dogs first, because I have a number of things that I want to go over. And it's like, I can't do everything. It seems like I can't do everything all in one, because then I'd be here for hours. <laughs> so we're going to break this up. So we're going to talk about dogs and cats first. Now, dogs and cats, just like if they were, they were your children, they need a really good um carry your oil and you really have to dilute and know that you're diluting very well with these oils. Now, 
it's not always a huge necessity depending on the size of your dog and depending on your cat. So let's look at the carrier oil and um, that you want to create. So a 15 ml bottle, which is this size, okay? That's a 15 ml bottle. That's approximately 250 drops, okay? You would put two drops of your essential oil in here to have a oil that you can use on um, like puppies and cats that are under eight weeks of age, right? If you have dogs that are 20 pounds or maybe an, you know, or under and, and you have elderly dogs um, <clears throat> or over 20 pounds, it's one drop to every 85 to 100, which is the equivalent of about a five mil bottle, okay? Now it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, we're just giving you a good suggestion of how to much to dilute, all right? Not that you have to be specific, okay? Don't be going one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> know that a 15 ml bottle full is about uh, up to about here to the brim is about 250 drops. If you have dogs that are over 200 pounds, then you can use 50 drops of carrier oil and to one drop of essential oil. And if you're using a really hot oil, which is really something you need to be cautious about, like cinnamon, cassia, oregano, those kinds of things, um, which we're gonna talk about why you wouldn't use some of those. Um, you're looking at a hundred drops of your carrier oil to one drop, okay? So half a bottle, right? So that gives you some good ideas about dilution. Always, just like people, every animal is unique and every animal has its own, you know, they can be more sensitive than, some can be more sensitive than others, okay? So just kind of watch their behavior. Uh, what are they doing? How are they behaving? Are they sporadically uh, just like um, running around the room like they've got something hot on their, on their butt end? What are they doing? Okay, that's probably something you shouldn't have done. Now, there are things like the reflexology. You know, it's like, where would you put it? On a dog or a cat, let's specifically look at dogs. So dogs, you're looking at a, um, you could pretty much put it anywhere there's the problem, okay, the area of concern. You can put it on their back paws, now there are reflexology charts out there, so I would, I would highly suggest looking at a reflexology chart. You can get them on, you just look it up on Google or whatever search engine you use, because most of us can do that. If you're here on Zoom, you can probably do that. So when you're thinking about um, the reflexology, now it's also the same dogs and cats both. They have reflexology for the back paws. Okay, you can put things on the base of the skull, just like for us, okay? You can put it on the top of their head. You can put it on the ears, never down the ears, okay? But you can be behind the ears or on the ears. Never put it in their eyes. You put it under their eyes, but there's certain precautions there as well. And you can put it underneath here as well. They can't, they can smell it. So their smeller is like way stronger and better than ours is. Okay, keep that in mind. All across the board, all your animals are that way. Your, your, the horses are even better at that, I think. Um, <clears throat> they can smell things from a long distance. It's like some of these animals can smell something dead, literally within not your dog or maybe your cat, but other animals can be miles away from something and smell it. I think that's just incredible. But it's like, wait, what? Um, so know your animal and know what you're doing with them. We can still use essential oils all three ways that we would on ourselves, aromatically, topically, and internally. So let's talk about aromatically. 
Aromatically, you can diffuse in the air. If you've got a diffuser, I don't have one next to me. Um, that's the best way for a dog or a cat, okay? Always make sure that your animal can get out of the room because if they don't like it, they're not gonna be next to it, but if they like it, they're gonna be right underneath it. That's, and no, don't, it, it is surprising, but it does work that way. Another way, if you don't have a diffuser, you can always put hot water on the stove. Okay, and put a drop in the water, a couple drops in the water. You can put it on a cotton ball, you can put it on some uh, material or some a cloth or a tissue uh, near the animal or on the bedding. That includes your little guys, okay? So like your rabbits, um, your gerbils, things like that. But again, you're highly diluting for those guys, extremely. Um, especially when you're using things like lavender, because lavender is a sedative, um, you, you can put them to sleep forever. Just saying that, okay? So don't be afraid. Just know that you don't need, it's a very tiny, 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 tiny amount, okay? Um, you can use that steam, like I said, in the hot water. Um, if you've got a humidifier, you can do that as well. That's very safe. Um, and on your, if you have a fan, your air filter, whatever that looks like, okay? You can put it on the cotton ball and put it in front of it. Heater vent on the floor, same thing. I've even um, shoe, shoelace, same thing. Anything that will soak up that essential oil, okay? Now let's look at topical. Topical is something that pretty much everybody will do. You can place it on yourself. You can place it on your on your animal. Again, dilute, right? Most of the time, you're going to, if you put it on topically, you can actually put it on you, rub your hands together, and then just pet them. And that's your cat and dog's bone, okay? Because it's already diluted. Because once you go into your hands, it takes 30 seconds for it to soak into your skin. Right, so the re what residue is left, you can soak and just stroke over their fur. You can place, uh, um, you can massage it into their their body if you want, or in their hair, in circular motions. Um, you can put it on again on the reflex points on their feet or on their paws. You can again apply it directly to the area of interest. Okay, so if they have a hot spot on the back of their, um, on their back, you know, from whatever that, why ever, use a peppermint lavender together. I know peppermint seems like that would be a little bit much, but peppermint's very cooling. And so what's going on with a hot spot? It's inflamed and it's inflammation. So let's cool it off. Lavender helps in um, soothing out the skin and, and calming it down. It's like if you were to get a burn on your finger or on your skin, that lavender is great for that. Everyone should have lavender in your, in your kitchen. But peppermint along with lavender will help in soothing that. Now, again, you want to dilute it or you can make a spray, get yourself a spray bottle, okay? And you can use distilled water and then put a few drops of lavender and a few drops of peppermint, depending on what size you have. Now, this is about an eight ounce bottle, okay? Um, and so that's all I'm gonna put in here. And spray them, okay? Spray their area and let it soak in. If you're really, and you really wanna be cautious after that, use On Guard toothpaste. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that one some more, but you can rub On Guard toothpaste in there. Um, it's it's very safe. It's highly diluted because it's a toothpaste. You use it. Why wouldn't you? Why couldn't you use it on that? It's good for the skin. Okay. It's good for everything. Good for immune support. And we're going to talk about that some more. But we're going to talk about um, toothpaste and other things you can do. And you can also apply um, one drop of essential oil in two cups of ice water for and a cold compress. Um, or hot water for a hot compress. What you do is you put your um, your cloth in the water 
and then wring it out. So what will happen is as you bring that cloth out of the water, wring it, the water, the oils, oil and water don't mix, it stays on the surface. So you bring that cloth out and it's on there. What really works well is a sock, just a tip, okay? Use an old sock and that will work well if you're not wanting to wring it out. So like if you're working with a horse or something, if you're working with a cat, they're not gonna appreciate that. <laughs> Just don't do that. They don't like water. <laughs> you can also make a roller bottle. So it's any little uh, 5, 10 male bottle or bigger. I mean, there's all different sizes of a bottle that has a roller top on it. And I don't have one. Oh, yes, I No, I don't. I don't have one right here. And let's look internally. So internally, oils that um, are meant to be internal use from doTERRA have a serving fact or a on their on on them so i like i have serenity here there's no no suggestion of any kind for internal use okay but on my lavender that i have here it has a supplement fact i'm going to say you see that there's a supplement fact that's how you know from doTERRA that that essential oil is recommended to be used internally okay that has been fda approved to by their grass standard was generally genuinely regarded as safe okay for our consumption and it's the same for our animal friends but just remember too one drop of an essential oil is equivalent to about one teaspoon of dry herbs. Always keep that in mind, especially if you're cooking with them, <laughs> especially things like oregano. But keep in mind that if you had, if you were making a recipe or doing something for your animal, how much do I want? Very little. Okay. A very little goes a long way because in that one drop are trillions of molecules to help every single cell, and that's done within 20 to 30 minutes which is incredible, okay? Same thing for us. When we put something on topically, we get, it soaks within the skin within 30 seconds and it gets in every single cell within 20 to 30 minutes. So with that one drop has trillions of cells, we have billions of cells. So which is higher, trillions or billions? Trillions, of course, like our deficit right now. Anyway, not to get into politics, but just saying. Um, you can put it in their food. You make sure that um, you can put it in a capsule if you've got a big enough dog, and or you can hide it. Now, a lot of us will get medication from a veterinarian that's, okay, hide it in cheese or hide it in their food, whatever it takes to get that pill down there. You can do the same thing. Go to, the, go to your local um, store that has that carries natural products like essential oils and stuff and you can get a capsule and make your own, okay? Um, you can put a drop on your finger and you can put it in their mouth. Um, you can put it on their food. You can, um, whatever works, you can put it on their gums. It soaks into the gums. Um, you can put it in their drinking water, which we don't recommend for the cats, but for the dogs, that's okay. Um, it's uh, one drop of essential oil for two cups of water. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, now, if you're using our toothpaste, it works very well for our animals. Okay, do not, however, make sure that nothing has xylitol. Xylitol, it can be very deadly to your dog. Um, you can use a drop of essential oil and two tablespoons of baking soda um, to make a paste. And you can um, use that to brush their teeth if you're brushing your animal's teeth, okay? Um, so make sure that you are maintaining oral health for them too, because that's their first defense when it comes to their entire body. I come from a dental background after 30 years. So keep that in mind as well, that whatever goes on here, it's going to affect everything else. 
All right, so we've talked about dilutions, we've talked about aromatic, we've talked about topical, we've talked about internal when it comes to your dog and your cat. So let's look a little bit more into the cat thing. Um, so cats, again, use the reflex um, points. You can also diffuse there again, make sure the cat can get out of the way or get out of the room. Um, do not put it by their nose. <laughs> Um, you can still put it by their ears, but don't put it in the ears. Don't put it by the genitals. You can put oils on their bellies. Um, and if you have an animal that is that's um, pregnant, has medical issues like seizures and other things, or they're taking specific medications, um, we recommend that you do talk to your veterinarian. Okay, this is never to succeed a veterinarian. Always have your diagnosis and have your veterinarian, at, uh, you know, to help you with what we are doing and let them know what you're doing so that they'll in turn learn because they've never learned about this kind of stuff. So they need our help. Um, never wipe the eye uh, with the tissue. Um, if, but if you, if you accidentally get anything in the eyes, whether that's your dog or your cat, take a tissue with carrier oil and just rub the eye, just wipe the eye, then close it and wipe the eye. Don't ever use water because water is a driver and it will penetrate even farther. So no water. Okay. It's like if you've ever eaten out and you've had um, a very, flaming spicy food what's the first thing we do take a drink of water does it help typically no you need a fat substance like milk that will actually tone it down so the next time you go out to eat and that happens ask for a glass of milk instead of your water it'll help <laughs> just saying now what are some oils or oils not to use around your cat um, don't use things like, uh, uh, don't, yeah, we'll get this. <laughs> no, there's a list a mile long of essential oils not to use around your cats. Not saying that you can't ever use them, but typically you want to be very cautious about that. Your melaleuca, your tea tree, um, basil, bergamot, Cinnamon, clove, dill, fennel, uh, grapefruit, lemon, lime, pretty much all citrus, orange, peppermint's another one, thyme, rosemary, spearmint, tangerine, and wintergreen. Those are some very cautious and try to avoid topically and internally. Now, if you're diffusing them in your home, don't be alarmed. It's okay. You're not going to want to do this every single day, and you don't want to use and you don't want to diffuse if they can't get out of the room. They can go somewhere else. They can go hide under the bed in the, in the back bed if you're diffusing in your living room. Just know that you don't want to put it on them. Okay? So don't be afraid to use the wild orange in your diffuser, it's okay. Now with dogs, you want to avoid your melaleuca, just like you would your cat, and you want to avoid birch, which is something we can't really get all the time anyway. Um, but there are other birches out there and you don't want winter green. Um, be very cautious when you start using the hotter oils around your dogs, like your cinnamon, cassia, oregano, um, thyme, rosemary, those kind of things. Um, those are the ones that you can use, but again, make sure they're highly diluted. All right, let's talk a little bit about horses. And then I'm gonna talk about some other products and how I use them. Horses are my ultimate. And I use, we've, I, the, the <laughs> The things that I've seen and heard that essential oils and these products do is like beyond amazement to me. And, it's, and horses are fun. 
because they let you know what you want, what they want. I know dogs and cats, especially cats, don't really tell you that. Dogs, some dogs will, but horses, I mean, they're like, I want that one because they don't want to eat it out of your hand, literally. Every single horse class I've ever done is we can have, if they can be clear across the other side of the arena, and they inch their way all the time. It's like, and then you're, they're like trying, their mouth is all over the oils. And so it's like, okay, let's go through them and find out which one they want. That's the fun part. And I've seen some amazing, amazing things. Um, again, uh, use caution and dilute, highly dilute when you're using those hot oils. Again, like their oregano and cassia, clove, those kind of things, cinnamon. So like if you're using On Guard, which has all those in it, dilute it, okay? Now, if you're getting it in the roller bottle that comes with the, the On Guard Touch, it's diluted for you. Score, right? You don't have to work as much, work as hard. Um, also know what your horse is going through. Are there any medical conditions you should know about? Um, are there any cautions, like if the, the animal is a nursing, um, or it's pregnant, uh, especially young animals, um, just know and observe, okay? Always observe, know who you're, what you're dealing with. Don't use oils on the nose. I always suggest that you put it on the halter or something that you're gonna take on and off because you don't want it on there all the time. A good example is, a class I did in Kansas and the lady didn't want this. She had got a new horse. They were doing something with it. And, and the other horse was the back pocket pony. <laughs> and she's like, instead of putting her away, she's like messing with her. And she finally takes the lavender and just puts it all over her nose. And it wasn't until they were done with the new horse that she's wondering where her horse is. And so calling this horse, she comes out of the barn, like just, nonchalantly just like I'm here but I'm slow well lavender is a sedative okay <laughs> it totally pretty much put her out so just keep that in mind there are situations where you're going to want that and that it, that happened to us and it was it was an agonizing grilling day um, and unfortunately, we lost the horse and foal, uh, which was sad. But we had a three-hour tra trailer ride because we couldn't get a veterinarian to come help us. And because um, we had a baby that was breech. And so I just smattered lava all over her nose, knowing it's a sedative. I didn't want too much. I didn't want her to go down on the trailer. But at the same time, I, I wanted her to at least somewhat relax right or at least be calm and so we were worried the whole way up there to a um a big facility here and um yeah as time progressed we realized that we weren't going to bring her home so there's always a time and a need for things and i can i can now talk about it without crying um but we lost a really nice horse so there's times be prepared because you never know what life is going to bring you and what's going to happen around the corner. Um, again, dilute. Um, don't use your oils at the same time as you're using other topical medications. Um, one big thing is don't panic. I hear so many people, they panic and then they end up putting too much on the horse. Okay. Pass it off to somebody else. Don't you do it. Um, and a lot of times too, if there's a skin irritation or a reaction to like a lump or something where you put essential oil, don't panic over that either. It'll go away. It should dissipate. It's not going to kill them. Okay. It resolves itself within a few hours or within 24 hours. <clears throat> and uh, don't apply oils to the saddle area prior to riding, um, especially peppermint because that's hot. Okay. So those are some don'ts. Um, you make sure you're contacting your veterinarian there again when you've got something going on and um, always, always observe the horse's behavior. Again, use it aromatically. 
topical, internal. Um, same thing when you're using it aromatically on the halter, something that can come on and off. Or a cloth, if they're in a stall, you can literally take a empty bottle, take the lid off, and just tie it someplace to where they eat because they're going to smell it. Okay. It's simple. It's that simple. Um, you can also put it in their bedding. It's another thing to put a few drops down in their bedding. Same thing. If you're using it topically, you can put it directly on their uh, on them. You can put it down their spine. You can put it on their hoof, at the bottom of the hoof, around the frog. Um, and then we're going to talk about some different things that I've done. Um, you can use the reflexology points. You can also the coronet band is another place. Uh, tips of the ears is another place, or over the pole, you know, which is right behind the ears. Um, same with the, the hot compresses. And whether it's your dog, whether it's your cat, whether it's your horse, you can put your essential oils in your shampoo. Yes, or you can use doTERRA shampoo. It makes it easy. Um, internally, same thing. You can make your own treats. You, and the same with dogs. You can make your own treats, put your essential oils in it. Um, remember that one drop is equivalent to one teaspoon of dry herb. So keep that in mind. You can put it on your finger um, and um, you can put some residue on their gums. Uh, one drop of essential oil per gallon of water if you want to put it in their water tank. Okay, so if it's something where you think you feel like they need to have their immune system boost, boosted, you can, you can think about um, some lemon or something along those lines or on guard, but only use a little bit. Okay. Now. What have I done with all of these products? I, I mean, I could, and what have others do I know? It's like, I keep finding out new things, but I want to tell you about the thing that I love the most. And that's this. We never talk about it much. And this is the uh, body mist. It's a hydrating mist. It's with the beautiful blend. So it's got lime and it's got a lot of different essent, um, carrier oils like your, um, um, sunflower seed oil. It's got passion fruit in here. It's got um, osmanthus flower extract in here. It's got bergamot, frankincense. It's got avocado oil. It's just a, I just love the smell of this. And every now and then, like when we had the BOGO here a few months back, doTERRA gave us a beautiful in the roller blend, which doesn't happen much. But the other thing I like about this is this tip is a 360 degree. So you don't, it doesn't matter if it's upside down, up, doesn't matter. It will come out. I use this as a detangler for my horses and I have Frisian crosses and I have a mare that I cannot do one braid in her mate or her tail. It don't, and that's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's too thick. I don't need a whole lot of this in order to use it and use it as a detangler. Um, it also is a very calming effect on them as well. So you're getting both. And it's also the essential oils and the oils that are in this are not just, they're nurturing your hair. So they're giving it some vitality. It's soaking into the hair. Okay. Just like if it were your skin. So I really love this. And I know a lot of people that that have their horses and they do this. So this is underneath the spa when you look it up. If you've got your own account, this is where you look. It's underneath the spa, the spa products. Love that as a detangler, okay? And as a calming, both at the same time. And probably one of my favorites that I use is this little one right here. This is called Correct X. I adore this because this is your equivalent to Neosporin and but there's no sulfa in here where Neosporin does and so our main ingredient in here is frankincense and then there's silicrism, cedar wood, lavender and tea tree. So because of the tea tree which is melaleuca all right this is something that you want to take precaution if you're using it on your cat and your dog. Not that you can't use it, 
it takes a very teeny, teeny, tiny bit. Okay, very teeny. I wouldn't use it all the time, but it's not that you couldn't use it if you don't have anything else at that point in time and you're really in need. I've used this on my chickens for some extreme wounds. I do this on a constant everyday basis where I take it and just smatter over the wound. I've also used this for um, um, my horse for um, an abscess. And I would just place a bead around the first I do, soaks a foot in a bucket of water. But before I put that one, before I put that foot in there, I put whatever oils I'm looking for, anti-inflammatories like frankincense, for instance. And you can do lavender, okay? So I, so I put those into the water, put the foot in the water. Now you've got a clean foot, right? And, you, and the oils, since the oils and water don't mix, the oils are going to soak into the skin because they're sitting on the surface of the water. So they're getting a benefit of two times. Now I have a clean foot and I'm going to take this and make a, and go a bead right along the frog and then cover it up, whether that's in a boot or your bat wrap, whatever it is that you're using. Um, I had a mare that could not walk. And once I did all that, a couple, it was like three or four days later, three days later, she was actually walking better. And then is when, because we, the farrier, we couldn't find anything. We didn't know why she wasn't. We just suspected it. Well, because of what I was doing every day, <laughs> um, it blew out halfway up the hoof. So normally when you have a stone bruise and you have that going on, it usually waits until it gets all the way to the coronet band before it comes out. Well, in this case, it was halfway up and it was almost an inch and a half close to two inches in diameter it was like, oh my gosh, no wonder she couldn't walk. So afterwards with the blowout and doing what we needed to do, um, you can't go in there and open everything up. So is there still bacteria in there? Probably. So we took the on guard essential oil and just dumped it down the hole, let it run, run down there and go all the way through, which is helping us get rid of the bacteria growth that's in there. So you have a more healthy buff and it will help that hook recover faster. Absolutely, I, like I said, I love these. And I wish I have to remember, take a picture first, because you guys wouldn't believe some of the things I've done. If I have a chicken that's limping, I just put it on the bottom of their feet, same as I would meat. Um, and I come out with better results or good results all the time. So again, if you've got a, an account, that's like a $12.50 or about less than $14. Best investment ever. <laughs> now for um, anxiety, whether it's a dog, cat, whatever, uh, Serenity seems to be the number one for horses, which is a lavender plant. Now, what I will say about horses is that um, Digestive issues can also be play a part in the stress or anxiety. Just keep that in mind. Um, there are some things you can do for that. I love the digestion tablets that we have that you can literally give them to the horse to eat and they will tell you when they're done because they won't eat it anymore. Might be a couple days, might be a couple weeks, or they might just continue to eat them. Let the horse tell you, okay, which is fun because they will really tell you this. And the correct X is also something that I've um, helped recently with a bunny rabbit, which got into something and completely hurt its upper back, um, kind of like scalped itself. And they don't know where, how. Um, and so the correct X help that bunny's hair grow back within a week. And I was surprised because I didn't know if it would or not because I didn't know if it damaged the follicles because it looked like it had. Um, so I just, you know, it was like precaution. It's like, it may not, 
but it did, and his bunny is doing just fine. So there again, correct X to the rescue. So. Now, what about seizures? Seizures, if you have a dog with seizures, um, which we do, we have a dog that out of the blue, don't know why, um, every now and then we'll have a seizure. So we pull the frankincense out. I could tell you a lot of stories, but I'm gonna tell you little ones. <laughs> The frankincense, you either put it on your finger, put it in their mouth, which they may not like, but guess what? They're going to get it anyway. And I use the roller, the frankincense touch, <coughs> so that we can, it's already diluted with fractionated coconut oil. And so with that in mind, I can also put some on the top of their head, which will help them come out of that seizure much quicker. Now, well, it can, if you put that on them every single day, if you know that your dog has seizures on a consistent basis, then, it's, then I would suggest thinking about an everyday application, just putting a little bit on the top of their head every day, or you put it on the reflex point on their back paw. Uh, it can pretty much stop them, it, stop it in their tracks. Um, Frankincense is, is an anti-inflammatory, it's an anti, um, you know, bacterial, anti-fungal. It's also something that uh, is for neuro anything neurological. And okay? when in doubt, use frankincense. And now let's talk about on guard toothpaste. So we talked about that a little bit earlier on the dog for like hot spots. But oh my gosh, fungus, if you've got fungus going on anywhere, that's a great option. If you've got a horse that's got like white socks or they've been laying or they're lighter in color and they've been laying in the manure and you just can't get that green stain out of there, use the, the doTERRA's um, toothpaste. If you've got, um, and you can also put it on the, the reflex points of the dog. You can put it on the frog of the horse help build the immune support because it's got on guard essential oil in there. You can use it for a rain rod. You can use it for um, just a number of different things. And you can use it as a silver polisher. If you don't have anything else and you're in a hurry, use it a little bit on your silver and then you can use an old toothbrush, scrub it if you need to, or you can just use your fingers and then rinse it underwater. You'll be amazed. <laughs> Not only is it good for our hygiene and the beginning of our overall health, it's good for so many other things. <laughs> and hopefully here in the near future, I have a lady that's going to tell us all the things she's ever done using the On Guard toothpaste. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I still keep hearing about more. If you've got a story about on guard toothpaste, I'd love to hear it. I've even helped people with pink eye. I've helped people with animals that have pink eye and just use digestin around the eye. It's that simple. I know digestin was meant for digestive issues, but many years ago I heard that and I'm like, what? It's not about whether or not you have the right essential oil. It's whether or not you are just using something natural to help take care of something. And you use enough of it. Or I should say less, um, less more often is better than more less often. Remember that, okay? Less more often is better than more less often because we have this idea that more is better we don't want more is better we want less is better always keep that in mind and and make sure that you're using it like every couple of hours depending on what it is that's going on or at least two to three times a day you decide what that looks like now and i again I want to keep this down to under an hour and I've been on here longer than I really probably should, but get yourself some spray bottles. There's still so many things that we can cover. 
I can't do it all in one day or in one class. I hope you get some information out of this and maybe you can share this with someone that is struggling and trying to find solutions. We want to help them find those solutions. And we can be amazed by these essential oils. And doTERRA is the most tested and most trusted essential oil. And I know in my heart and with the way that we've used products that, and we also have veterinarians that are teaching us about using these essential oils with our animals that we can use them with our animals and know that they're safe. Can't vouch for anybody else, but I can vouch for doTERRA. So we hope that you find this good. Please comment to, my, to, to this video and find my page, my naturals with the number four, naturals for animals. Um, I'm also naturalsforanimals.com. I do have some testimonials in there. And if you have a testimonial that you'd like to share, I would love to add that to there. Um, I want people to understand what they can do and how they can help their pets and be a better pet owner. So you guys take care. We will see you again. Um, I will be on here again next Tuesday. Um, and I believe we're doing, we, we're talking about green cleaning uh, next Tuesday at seven o'clock Pacific time. See you guys soon and enjoy. Thank you.